Hey folks, welcome back. I'm Dave and we're here in my shop where I build E-War guitars. This is going to be the next episode where I'm building this Tellyish guitar right here. This is the uh, first uh, CNC made guitar I've ever made. If you'd like to check out uh, the CNC work on this thing, I'll uh, post the playlist up here. You can check that out. But in this video, we're getting ready to uh, make the pickups for this thing, which are going to be a couple of soap bar P90s. So let me hang this guitar up over there, turn my camera down and show you the parts we're going to use, and we're going to get rolling with this right now. Okay, so I buy my uh, pickup kits from Stu Mac, and it's just a standard uh, uh, soap bar P90 uh, pickup uh, winding kit. And so it comes with a little soap bar cover. I guess I call it a soap bar because it kind of looks like a soap bar. And here's the plastic bobbin I use. Um, here's my six pole pieces, which will screw through the bobbin. Here's my two mounting screws and the two mounting springs that go with it. This is my uh, two, I'm using Alnico 5 magnets, and there's a little hookup wires in there too. Uh, there's a pair of Alnico 5s. Here's my little bar spacer that goes in between the, uh, uh, the bobbin and the base plate. Here's my base plate, and here's my two attachment screws that'll screw the base plate up and into the bottom side of the bobbin. So, uh, and I'm using on this, I'm using a 42 gauge poly-coated wire, which I also bought from Stu Mac. And, uh, and I'm going to wind both pickups, uh, I'm going to wind them reverse wind, reverse polarity, so I'm going to wind one of them in one direction and the other one in the other direction, and I'm going to switch the polarity on the magnets as well. Uh, so there's hum canceling in that, in that middle position, because in the first position and the third position, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make some noise out of it because of the 60 cycle hum deal and all that stuff. So anyway, uh, now I've already wound the first, uh, I've already wound the first bobbin right here. This is going to be my bridge bobbin. I've got 10,047 winds on the thing. And, uh, and so the uh, neck bobbin, I'm going to wind it a little, little less hot, and I'm going to wind this with about 9,000, maybe 9,100 winds on the neck bobbin which is going to give it a little more clarity and, uh, and not quite as hot as a bridge, not, not quite as twangy as a bridge pickup is going to be. And here's a few of the tools I'm going to use for this. I've got my soldering station here, my little soldering gun. I've got this little skinny soldering wire, which is perfect for, uh, for guitar electronics. It's, uh, let me see here, it is 6040 rosin core solder. It's 0 .32, 0 .032 inch solder, so it's a little skinny stuff, works perfect for this. I've got myself a multimeter right here, which is going to allow me to check the coils once I've wound them to make sure I don't have a break in anything and make sure I've got my solder joints connected properly. And over here, let me move that camera over and I'll show you my little pickup winder that I made myself. So this is my homemade pickup winder. Um, as you can see, I did a glass cover on it because I think it's kind of cool and I can see it's not glass, it's plexiglass. I've got myself a counter in here. Uh, there's a reset button for the counter. Here's my speed deal that I could set the speed of the uh, rotating uh, bobbin up here. I've got a little motor and uh, there's a counter. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in there. I have a magnetic counter that's going to count each rotation of the pulley inside, which is going to uh, keep track of the counts of winds. And I've also got a switch on the back back here that can uh, reverse either go counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on which way I want to uh, uh, wind the bobbins. So over here I've got this spinning block of aluminum, which is what I'm going to attach my, uh, attach my bobbin to, and I just got a little double-sided sticky tape on it, and I attach the bobbin right here, and here is where I run my wire, my pickup wire, up through here, and these are the limiters I have set for just a little bit narrower than the width of the bobbin. So uh, anyway, so that's how I go about doing it. This was a pretty simple thing to make. I've, it's probably got $100 worth of parts in it and a little bit of labor. And uh, when I went to look into buying a pickup winder, the ones I were looking at were over $500 each. So I thought, shoot, with a little, a couple of parts here and a little bit of labor, I could save me a few hundred dollars, and I did. And then things worked out great. It's probably not as perfect as one you could buy, but it works out. It's been working out really good. So anyway, I'm going to get set the camera set up over on the other side, and we're going to get winding this, uh, this neck pickup bobbin, and I'll explain it as we're going. Okay. So uh, let me get started by saying first, and I, I didn't mention it before, but I am not an expert by any stretch of the imagination as far as building pickups. I've probably made a couple of dozen sets of pickups so far. I've made humbuckers, P90, 
P90s and I've made single coil pickups. And uh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm no expert whatsoever, but I think it's kind of cool. You know, it's sort of tedious work for a guy with fumbly hands like me. Um, but I, I enjoy it at the same time. And it's really re rewarding at the end when you hear your pickups, uh, the sound your pickups make in a finished guitar. It's just kind of a very rewarding thing. I don't think I'm saving any money by doing it with the time I've got into uh, making pickups. But uh, I, am, I get a little better every time. I get a little faster every time, and I understand a little more about what I'm doing each time. So to me, it's kind of worth it. So anyway, just know I'm no expert. I'm just showing you how I do it. I read the instructions every time before I start a set of pickups, and uh, and I watch a couple YouTube videos on it. And uh, and anyway, so that's it. So I enjoy what I do, and uh, I just want to let you all know that. So the first thing you got to do is if you look inside these plastic bottoms, you see some casting seams here when they cast the stuff. That could uh, potentially hook one of your wires when you're winding it and break the thing, which would cause you to have to start all over again or try to figure out how to, uh, how to uh, fix the, the break in the middle of a, a, a wind. So what I do is I got a little 400 grit sandpaper uh, stuck to a tongue depressor here. And I like to go around, first of all, and smoothen off anything in there that I think might could potentially uh, catch a wire. Okay. All right, not too bad. So now, <clears throat> if you look at this thing, th this is viewing from the top and this is the bottom. If you look at the bottom, there's two extra holes. That hole there goes all the way up into where your, your coils are gonna be. Well, both of them do. And this one's on the corner. So what you got, you're gonna run your start wire through here and your finish through this one over here. And you'll see why when we get towards the end and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna um, put this thing together. So. But in the meantime, so now this coil I already made, okay, you could see the start was black and the finish was white. I'm gonna wind this one the same direction, only I'm gonna reverse it. I'm gonna do the start as white and the finish as black, which is gonna in essence give me a reverse wind. And then I'm gonna swap the pickups, uh, the, the uh, magnets around and point, you know, do a different polarity on the magnets, which is gonna give me reverse polarity. So I'm gonna wind them in the same direction, switch those two wires, and that should give me the reverse wind, reverse polarity. Um, anyway, so here's my, uh, here's my hookup wires. So I'm gonna take them, and they're 28 gauge. So I'm gonna strip off about 3 16 of an inch on each end. Get my coil wire. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this around the end here. I'll give it 10 or more winds. Okay. Now, let me see. So I can hold this in my little alligator clip to kind of hold it steady for me. Now, I'm just going to only take a second with this skinny little wire. Now this is poly coated wire, so it's got a coating on it, but as soon as I hit this, as soon as I hit that with the heat, it's gonna melt that uh, coating off of there and allow me to have good contact. So I'm just gonna put that there for a couple seconds. There we go. Make sure I got a good connection there. Looks like I do. Now, so what I'm gonna do, so this is my start, and I want this, when we're all said and done, these coils, this is the top of the pickup, I want these coils to go around the pickup in a counterclockwise direction. So what I've gotta do is I'm gonna take the other end of this guy, right here. I'm gonna put it up through that hole. like so. I'm going to pull about an inch through. Like that. Now let's see. In order to go counterclockwise, I want this wire to lay in that direction right there. Coming over the end like that. Okay. That looks good. 
use this guy to kind of kink the wire so I want it to lay as tight as possible to the inner core of this bobbin okay and to make sure it's going to lay really flat in there and not get in the way of the winds I'm going to go ahead and put a little piece of tape down there too and it's going to insulate that that uh, solder joint from the other the other coils going on there okay so I've got a little double-sided sticky tape going right up the middle of this thing and I'm probably gonna get my head in the way but I gotta get over here and see that I'm pretty much centered up nice both ways because we want to spin it nice and true okay so I've got my coil of wire sitting on the ground right below me that is the best way to pull the wire off of there and I'm gonna hold it right here very lightly and I'm gonna go first I'm gonna turn it a few times by hand To make sure everything looks good. I want to make sure my two limit stops are set at the right place. We don't want it to go all the way to the end of the, we don't, we don't want the wire to spin right up against the edge of the flat work. We want it off just a little bit. Otherwise it's going to build up on the edges. And I think that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to start just very, oh I got to, first I got to reset my winder. Okay, so we're back to zero, and I got to remember I've probably got six or eight winds on there now, but I'm going to start off just very slowly. I'm just I'm holding this between my fingers just very lightly. My fingers are just going to guide it back and forth, just like that. I'm going to try to keep a fairly steady motion. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, it looks like it's going on there really nice. Okay, so now it's time to start winding. This one's going to have 9,000 to 9,100 winds on the thing. I don't go too fast. I suppose this is spinning 500 RPMs, maybe a little bit less. I don't like, it'll go faster than that, but. I'd rather not be in a kind of a beginner at this. So anyway, I'm just going to try to keep a nice steady motion going back and forth, trying to keep some separation in between the layers. And I don't want to spend any too much time in any one spot. I want to keep it going nice and even. And I'll get a couple hundred winds on there. So I've got 400 winds on there now. Let's stop and take a look. Okay, it's looking good. I'm filling the whole thing nice, so I think we can keep going. I'll probably stop every 500 or 1,000 winds, probably every 1,000, just to check, make sure I'm not getting it too high. I want it as evenly across everything as possible. I've got a little mark on my dial over here that where I could stop where I know that's a comfortable speed for me. This is considered scatter wound because I'm doing it by hand. The uh, professional outfits use uh, use machines that lay the wire on there absolutely perfectly but they say you get a little better tone if you do it by hand like this I'm not squeezing very tight with my fingers I could just feel the wire slipping between my fingers just enough tension so it lays on there nice and tight alright there's about 2000 let's stop and have a look okay I think it's looking pretty good. Okay. 9,100 turns. 9,112. I am quite pleased. That looks really nice. Let me get that camera over here. I think that's looking really good. Laying in there, it looks nice and tight. I'm very happy with that. I think it looks good. Right there. 
I'll go ahead and cut this here. I just simply pull it off my winder, and there we go. There it is. I think it looks good. So this white guy in here coming out of the middle is the start. And this guy over here is going to be my finish. So now we got to go solder the lead wire onto this finish right here. Okay, so basically just an effort to kind of keep this wire from moving around. I usually do this before I take it off of the winder. I'm going to go ahead and stick a piece of tape on this thing. Just something like that. And this tape happens to fit in there really well. So I can just run that in there to press the tape on. Okay. Okay. So here's my finished wire, which in this case is going to be a black one. So I'm going to strip these ends here. About 3 sixteenths or so. Seems to be the right amount. Like so, I'm going to give them a little twist here. Like so. Now, so this wire has got to lay up under here, and then it's going to come through this hole, and I want it to poke through the hole about an inch or three quarters of an inch or something like that. So, I want to try to tie this on. I guess I'm going to want it to be almost up at the end here. So, I think I want to tie it on somewhere right around here. Let me get that straight. Hold these two guys together here. Okay, now let me get a little solder on that guy. Hold it on there for a second. There we go. Get that sharp point off of there. Okay. I do not want that uh, soldered end of the wire laying up against these, the poly-coated uh, coil wires because it could wear through, create a short, and make the pickup not work. So I'm going to cover these guys with a little bit of that same tape. This tape incidentally came from Stu Mac as well, and it's their pickup making tape. It's for just this reason. It's the right width. Okay, like so. Okay. Want that about like that. Now let me tape this guy down. Okay. Now that that's on there. I want to check the resistance. So I'm going to set my multimeter here at 20,000 ohms. 7.28. So we have 7.28 DC resistance. The other one that was wound to 10,047 winds was 8.15. So this one here is not quite as hot, which is exactly what we wanted for the uh, neck, neck coil. So that's good. I'm pretty happy. Okay, so the next step in the process is putting in the pole pieces into the bobbins. So I've got a little paraffin wax right here. I'm using that to help me get the screws started. These aren't terribly tight or anything, but the paraffin wax will definitely help. And I'm going to run them out of the bottom of the bobbin, oh, about an eighth of an inch. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut back some of the braiding on this uh, hookup wire, because this is our ground. This outside stainless steel braiding is the ground for these pickups. Okay, I managed to get a little bit off there. I'm going to try to tin that to help hold it together. Let's see if I could do that. We'll run this wire down through the base plate. Like so. 
Okay. The outer braid is one is to there. Okay. So I also have to hook up on this this one. This is the bridge pickup. I'm going to hook the start into that as well. So let's see if I can hold that on there. Just melt them all together. Okay, so my battery died on that last clip and I didn't know it. Uh, so I finished that tedious uh, uh, soldering in the wires, which is sort of difficult for me. But I managed to get it done. And uh, now it's time to move on to installing the magnets. And as you can see, I have a little compass there, which is telling me which is the north and which is the south side of the magnet. So what I'm going to do on one of the pickups, I'm going to select the north facing edge of each magnet and face them towards the pole pieces in the middle. And on the other one, I'm going to select the south uh, facing edge of the magnet and face those towards the, uh, the pole pieces, which is going to give me reverse polarity. Now it's just a matter of putting on the base plate, which I've got those two little screws, which I've already put a little bit of paraffin wax on them. And uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and screw them in, snug them up nice and tight, and that keeps the whole thing together really well. So now it's just a matter of putting on the uh, cover and then I'll run my pole pieces all the way down to they protrude just above the cover. And of course, once I set up the guitar, I'll adjust the uh, pole piece heights to match the radius of the strings. And, and I'll bring them, but we'll get into that in the next video. Now, of course, I want to test it to make sure that I didn't screw nothing up, soldering that together and hooking the bass plate on. And it was good. Well, all right, folks, that's about it. That is how I make my P90 pickups. Definitely do a lot of fumbling around, and some is kind of tedious, but I'll tell you, when you get these guys in the guitar and you hear somebody playing it that really plays well, and you hear the sweet tones coming out of it, it is just totally rewarding. It really is. It's worth every minute I spent in it. Um, anyway, uh, so they came out nice. The bridge pickup came out at about 8.3K ohms, and the neck pickup came out around 7.3K ohms, so I think they're going to be nicely balanced, and I can't wait to hear them. So uh, if you all come back next week, I'm going to get these pickups installed. We're going to set up the guitar, maybe even do a little sound sample too. Anyway, so I hope you all have a wonderful week. God bless you, and we'll see you all in the next one.